All right. Uh, welcome to another Dragonfall chat. I'm uh, Matt Sears. I have the philanthropy overlord for Dragonfall. I've got my wonderful co-host Josh here, who's a sound technician, and I took over the reins. He ran the charity before I did, so he's, team, he's, he's resting out his laurels after after a very successful first year of it. Uh, I've got, and we've got Lee Gaddis, our guest, the main attraction. From uh, he's he's the what, what chief of Gaddis Gaming are you? Chief Game. Uh, I'm the uh, head of design. So mm -hmm. all the new products that come out, I am I am like uh, the closest analogy would be an art director. Mm -hmm. so you you're know, trying to and, pretend like you didn't name the company after yourself. Is that what you're saying? Actually, I didn't. If you notice, my name is an improper spelling spelling of the proper scottish name and the only reason we used it is because we went through 123 domains that were all taken and the only one that wasn't taken was gaddis gaming so g-a-d-d-i-s is the proper mm -hmm. scottish spelling of gaddis i always wondered about that uh matt dropped off for a second but we can keep going um so uh first of yeah. all lee i just want to say it's nice to see your face We've really missed <laughs> seeing you at, at the conventions. It, it's been... I know, uh, right? It's been a rough year, right? Yeah. 2020, man. That's a... You know what? I, I'm pretty much a loner. I mean, I've been I've been doing uh, social distancing since I was eight years old and started playing D&D. &D, so that's you're not, not a big deal for me. Yeah, I am. You're, I'm you're, a total... Oh, man. I'm a total... Like, me and one other person, I'm fine, you know? You're, but at you're the like, conventions, like, you're, 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 I... You're, yeah. You're, I'm at the conventions. I let it all out. Exhausted by being an extrovert. That's you are like me. You will you will throw a lot of words out, and then you'll be like, "I got nothing left." Yeah. Out. <laughs> That's pretty much. Well, you and I yeah. are on the same. Yeah. Card, buddy. You're like, well, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Exactly. So there yeah. Is, so as me at the so conventions, my... I just lose my voice after 20 minutes, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So awesome. so my. So going to the conventions is my social outlet for like the year, right? So being around you guys, playing games, meeting up with old friends, you know, sharing common interests, uh, that's the only thing I miss about 2020. 2020 has given us lemons, but uh, Gaddis Gaming as a company has been able to make lemonade out of that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we won one of the best new business of the year awards for 2018 mm -hmm. um, from uh, Any Ideas out of Detroit. So for us, um, the validation of our of our business model and the fact that we were pioneering in, a, in an industry um, that that needed some resuscitation, because I know the the big thing on um, on the internet right now is is war gaming fading out, right? Is war gaming going away? Historical war gaming going away, right? Yeah, okay, I can see historical being more of a problem. I yeah, mean, so, so that's wanna, a big discussion not, right now. Sound insensitive, but mm -hmm. having done booths at historical conventions there's a bit of die-off you know like there's a in memoriam video at those things you know it, it's, yeah <laughs> it's not yeah yeah i'm not i'm not trying to be ageist it's just like it's no no but you know yeah but i but i i think from our conventions the one that me and susan have done is that we attract our our our, our group play attraction skews young like we attracted, um, at, I know you've seen the pictures of the Women of Windsor Wargaming Group. It's all girls between 12 and 23, you know, or younger women, and they will kick anybody's butt on the gaming table. And we did that three years in a row. We started it up one year. Uh, a couple of young ladies came over and played. They really enjoyed it. They came back the next year and brought some friends, and that's when we started up the Women of Windsor's Wargaming Group, and they started. Uh, every year we would meet up uh, in Windsor, Ontario, and we would play. And those women were serious about gaming. And then I realized what was going on because we went to a convention in Michigan uh, called Proricon. And a father brought his, his daughter and her friend uh, in. And they sat down and they played a game uh, using our guards rule system. And the girls, like, they read through the rules. They had their armies. One girl played Italian army. The other girl played a Finnish army. And it was against a British and American army. And they worked together. They had a really good strategy. They executed the strategy. The guys were kind of, oh, we're just going to rush in with the tanks and destroy everything. And once the one 18-year-old um, guy lost his tank, 
uh, in turn five, he got up and walked away from the table. I mean, you know, yeah, when you sit down at the table, it's a social contract. You play the game to the end, win or lose. You can you can forfeit with grace. Yeah, not just get up and walk away because women are kicking your ass, right? Yeah. So so I think that a lot of the die-off is because of that type of attitude and that type of player. And I think the reason that our, our gaming groups grow is because we welcome everybody to the table. And I think yeah. with... Um, and we, yeah, and, yeah it, you're, you're like this. Our, our group, Chicago Skirmish War Games, is like that. We don't put yeah. up with that sort of behavior. It's, it's not... Yeah. It's not okay. I mean, no, I it's not. I discriminate with who I play with, so I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I think that that's why we're friends, and I think I mean Adam at Tabletop Minions has really set a, a good standard for a lot of new intro gamers to follow of of courtesy, of politeness, of discor- uh, of proper discourse, and a, of, of just yeah yeah and, and painted minis right and so i think that as as new people move in and they feel welcome it'll minimize that effect of uh you know the gragnark effect right i've been here i've been gaming like this for 30 years and i don't need any yeah. women here those uh, those I, people you know the, the, uh, the battle tech players will only play iron wind medals they won't play the yeah. new minis you know like that yeah i understand what you're saying. yeah so, those so, people are bad people i just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah. Well, they're, well, they're, well, they're, they're gatekeepers, and and yes, individuals like yourself would prefer there not to be a gate. Yeah, well, and, or 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 let people in. I mean, the gatekeeping should be. Um, I should not have to sit down and be asked to play a game of Northern Aggression. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know, uh, oh, you remember I, what? What I, you remember when I flipped out about that pirate game at, at that. Right. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 You were more upset about it than me. So uh, you know, because I because I'm so used to it, it's just background noise at this point. Uh, but you're right. So so we have to. So we've been looking at this thing through through a certain prism and a certain lens for so long that it becomes background noise. But now people are aware of it and more conscious to it. And I, you know, because I had a um an older gentleman ask me. He said, "Why do you think there's more black people in the gaming community?" And I didn't want to say, well, because you guys are assholes to people. Uh, so I said, because of the price of entry, you know, because you have to have a lot of disposable income in order to play miniatures gaming, right? But you, but the second part to that question would be, you have to make people feel welcome at the table. And I think Eric Lang just did a very long um, essay on this, where he talked about, you know, the the aggressions that he's noticed at Origins, and we were going to have a panel discussion about it. Uh, for or- Origins Offline, and then they cancel the entire panel discussion. And then when you look at who are the, the board of directors of Origins, you see that it's all white males, and you understand why they don't want to have that very difficult and uncomfortable we conversation. Worst. We are yeah. we are the worst, man. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, so yeah, they I say... Like, <laughs> let, let's, let's, do, let's do a difficult conversation panel for Dragonfall. I think like, we I should. Know- yeah, how to make people feel cool. welcome yeah i mean it, yeah. it's it's way past time it's way past time mm-hmm. because we've shown that we can have games and have people of all nationalities all all genders all sexes there at the table and make them feel welcome and comfortable and want it and that's how the hobby grows you know well, our, our good friend alex chang you've been alex i believe yeah uh, mm-hmm. yeah robot we, wars right we've had yeah yeah uh, giga robo giga robo um, yeah he uh, he did one of these chats for us already too. He was like my uh, he works in video, so I was like, hey Alex, can you do a video chat with me and show me some things? It was very very kind of him. Um, yeah. I'm sure he'd be down for that. Um, but uh, so when you're talking, um, I mean, we can continue on 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 this chat too. I mean, I'm not trying to completely change the subject, but uh, I would like to talk about the guard system at some point. I think Josh was going to bring it up earlier. Yeah. Um, okay. Is that what you're playing when you're playing with the the Windsor Ontario uh, women? Yeah. Yeah. So we've been beta testing um, uh, the guards rule system. That stands for the Gaddis uh, <laughs> the Gaddis Universal Assembly Rules Data System. So it's mm-hmm. all the rules that we like mashed together and streamlined into an easy play system. So it's a so. It's a way for us to be able to 
teach people to play in literally 15 minutes, but have a lot of strategic depth to it. So you can replay it over and over again. And, you know, it's model ag agnostic. We prefer that you buy our models, you know, because we sell them with the game, uh, sure. with the game rules. But you don't have to have our models to play the game. And a lot of people buy them. And the really interesting thing about it is that people are asking us for, like, wizards versus you know, space marines. Like, they really want to mix it up, mix up the genres, you know. They take their two favorite genres, sci-fi and fantasy, and they bash them together using our rules. You know, because... Hard to no, because we have a point system that pr does a pretty good job of that. So, um, so far we so haven't had a, a problem. Lot of play testing involved in this. Yeah, four years. And we've been doing it yeah. for four years. Um, and for us, um, by keeping it simple and keeping it cordial, it's not like Warhammer 40K where there's a lot of conflicting. For every rule, there's an exception that you have to remember. You know, it's basically, um, it's a way to keep both players involved at the same time, right? So I can teach you the basic mechanics of the rules with the stat cards, right? So you so you pull out your stat card and it'll have all the information about that unit on the stat card. So you just have to do a quick reference. But if you have infantry with a rifle, they have the stat. Your opponent also has infantry with a rifle. It'll have that stat, you know? Okay. So it's very easy to look at it and balance it that way. Um, so if anybody has any questions, unlike 40K, where you have to get, you know, three different codexes and then a, a faction approved, you know, we, we you know, we, we it's it, it's beer and pretzels and it's not real, like, rules lawyery, you know. And favorite, usually if there's a disagreement of games. <laughs> Yeah, and, and if you and if you have a and you have a disagreement, you roll off, and whoever wins the roll, that's that's how you that's what you play for the rest of the game. And we've run across that where we had one guy say, "Well, this is the way this rule is," and then when it's the other person's turn, they use that same rule, and he was like, "No, that's not how that's done." I'm like, "Well, you just said that's how it's done, so that, that has to be how it's done for both people. You can't say it's that way for you and not for them, you know." So there has to be that um, in our rules. It, it's um, we take into account that there's a, that there is a social contract between the two players um, to be cordial and polite to each other, and if there's any disagreement, you just roll off on it. So there's no really big arguments that can happen because if there's a situation that's not covered in the rules, just the two players just have to agree that this is how it's going to play for the game. Sure. So that so that way you can house rule and a lot of things that we don't take if into you consideration. Disagree too much. Just don't play with that asshole ever again. That's not the person you should be playing with. Yeah, yeah. Matter of <laughs> fact, I, I think I'm going to make a note of that and put that in the rule book as a note. <laughs> and if if, please, if you, you wanna, can't come to agreement, you should be playing with this person. Do you want to give us a a quick basic rundown of the mechanics? It's a D10 based system, correct? Yeah. So yeah. So we shied away from D6 because of the 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 margins of change were 33 percent on every dice roll. So by using a D10, we were able to get a little bit more granular. So, for example, if two people are playing, let's say you two soldiers are opposing each other or two armies are opposing each other, you roll to hit with all your modifiers based on terrain, right, and whatever special abilities your unit may have, right? And so you roll, you have a unit of 10 troops, each troop has one rifle, each rifle is equal to one 10-sided dice. Once that die is cast, um, you're, you're rolling against the defense value of your opponent. So you roll, uh, trying to roll um, to hit, right? You have a to hit number that you have to achieve. Then I have a defense value as, as the opposing player. I'm rolling to mitigate your number of hits with my defense dice. So I'm rolling 10-sided too. So say you need a 5 to hit and you roll seven hits. So I have to beat seven of those hits with my defense dice, right? So I roll my 10-sided, my defense number is, is X, um, uh, you know, if it's just, you know, based on what you're wearing. So if it's just cloth, it's nine. If it's a uh, flak jacket, it's eight. If it's body armor, it's seven. If it's power armor, it's six, you know, on and on and on until you get into so it like a bat. Then you get into that's, vehicles. That's interesting. So it's not an opposed role. It's it's two separate tests. It's an attack. It's two test separate and a defense tests. Test. Okay. And a defense like, test, right? Yeah, nice and elegant. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It, yeah. Because we wanted we wanted people 
to be able to pick it up really easy and not have a lot of confusion and not have a lot of token stuff on the table. Now, when we got the vehicles, we've learned that um, uh, that it was because of the number of weapons on a single vehicle, we had to change it. So what we have is vehicles... Um, like the Batmobile? Like the Batmobile. So, okay. So with, with, with people, let's say you, you fail your first four rolls, right, as a defender. You can take three of those as suppression, but the fourth one has to be taken as a casualty. So what happens is we've built in into that one dice roll, or to those two dice rolls, we've built in a, more, uh, a morale system. So you don't have to do a separate morale check. So you're not rolling to hit, you're not rolling to wound, and you're not rolling to damage. All of those are rolled into just two dice rolls. Right, so you're not doing four dice rolls; you're doing two. So we cut the number of rolls that you have in, down in half, so there's less to keep track of and less dice you want to have on the table because we're using a ten-sided dice. Right, so morale for infantry and wounds and all of that are built into that mechanic with and you suppression. Said it's 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 one die per model essentially. One die depending per on the weapon. One die per weapon, right? So, so let's so... say you have a submachine gun; it could be three dice. That you're rolling for one one model. So you you take a damage. The uh, that means that a model is going to be leaving the table. Correct. If you, if you if you get more than yeah, if you take more than the, the allowed suppression for that kit for that model or that group of models, let's say it's ten man infantry. If I take four suppression, or if I take four damage on my th three of them can be taken as suppression. The fourth one has to be taken as a casualty, right? Because I, I, that's mm. all I can take as suppression. But at the end of the turn, your suppression goes back because you're rallying your troops. You're getting your morale up. You're ready, ready, ready to go. But because Fritz got killed last turn, you know they, you know, you know, poor they hunkered. Yeah, poor Fritz, so right? You, we, 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 how many? If you might not know this off the top of the head, but mm. uh, how many minis do you have in the line? And where can we buy them? All right. Gaddis Gaming has over 2,000 individual miniatures in our miniatures line and growing. They can be bought at www.gaddisgaming.com. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have that link in there, but I wanted, yeah. uh, I wanted the shout-out. So, um, the the media, ball tank is still available from the Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kristen, I, was, I was talking about how awesome the model is. Uh, when when you when you were yeah he did a, your... he did a little he did a little commercial for you while you were having your uh, audio problem. Oh, nice. thank you. Um, yeah. So let's. Uh, I'd like to wrap this up one up and then do one more after this tonight. But uh, uh, tell me what social media we can find out for and like what's the immediate 2020 plans for Gat Gattis Gaming. So we're on Instagram. I mean, I'm not really social media savvy, but uh, I do try to post things on Instagram. I'm on Facebook more than anything else. Um, uh, Twitter. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I also run the Conflict uh, 47 group on Facebook and Detroit Tabletop Gaming League. So I'm, moder I'm admin of both of those groups. So feel mm -hmm. free to draw if you just want a general discussion. But Gaddis Gaming, and for each of our individual products, we have a Facebook group for it. So for the Guards Rule System, we have a Facebook group. For the Shattered Crown World War I universe, we have a Facebook group. And for Empire's Fall, we have a Facebook group. So if you're interested in any of those products and you don't want to be involved in anything else, you can specialize with, with all of that. And yeah, some and people... For, and just, for our love life, rules. you and I have direct messages <laughs> on Facebook. Yes, we do. We have direct messages, yes. So so yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that game four will get back up and running so we can you know Yeah, I mean uh I'm at, so the pandemic will end fun. so we can all see each other again. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be a good time. Uh I was talking to Adam about game four or could I could have just heard it when I was moderating his damn channel. Um uh, which I get paid for in drinks at conventions. So oh. I'm a I'm I'm yeah, I'm a free agent now if anybody needs me. But Not um, bad work if you can get it. <laughs> That, it's great. I mean, it's great when I see him six times a year. And it's not as great when I see him zero times a year. But uh, I think Game Four is just on pause, just because they felt like um, some of the submissions weren't ethically sound, 
and they wanted just to put a timeout on that. They're like, so if we we either need to screen all the submissions or it's you know let's let's just pause it. And they did the right thing. It's um, the world we live in now. <laughs> but yeah, let's thank you, Lee, for joining us. Uh, thanks, Josh. My pleasure's all mine. Here. What's that? The pleasure is all mine. Oh no, no, there's pleasure here. There's pleasure to be shared. <laughs> <laughs> don't take don't take my pleasure anyway this was a dragon yeah. fall chat and uh we're gonna have there's gonna be a series of chats with lee that uh, all have the same lighting and positioning and everything what do you know but yeah consistency is important